Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of How I Teach with the Language Arts Lady. I am Donna Reich, your hostess and your teacher for this video cast and podcast. So let's get our housekeeping things out of the way, first of all, so that we can head into our lesson. Uh, you have two ways to consume How I Teach via your favorite podcast app, or via the YouTube video or the video um, at the blog, languageartsladyblog.com. So um, it is a pretty visual type of program. So that means that you're gonna be better off watching the video, but you also have access every week to this um, teacher's notebook, which is an amazing packet that goes with each how I teach episode, and it has the material that I'm teaching from so that you can have that in front of you, even if you are doing the audio. And then it also has um, a free lesson of what I just taught you so that you can teach it to your kids. So um, whether you use the audio uh, option or the video option, you're going to want to snag your free teacher's notebook sheets at the blog. So anyway, that is what you need to know about consuming the material. So let's go on and dig into the PowerPoint and get started with today's lesson. <clears throat> All right. Um, we spent a lot of time uh, several weeks ago, really from episodes number, episode number 22 all the way through episode 26, talking about story writing for junior high students, story writing for high schoolers, and quotation inclusion, and dialogue inclusion. So last week, we flipped the uh, script a little bit and went to descriptive writing for very young writers. And I taught from the using the paragraph house outline from Slinky Dog One. So that is a second and third grade book. And today we're going to stay here in the lower levels. This is a middle school lesson and it is descriptive writing. So last week was also descriptive writing. Last week was using um, the senses. And this week it's going to be using literary devices and describers. It came from a um, one semester um, faith-based book. Um, that has some uh, spiritual lessons and a lot of other fun lessons. And you can see samples of this and you can also see the table of contents at the blog as well. This is a one semester downloadable book. So this is the first time that we have had um, our one semester books and our two semester books downloadable. And they are all available now at characterinkstore.com in downloadable fashion so that you can just buy them there uh, for a lot less cost and then print off whatever you want to use. So this came from Meaningful Composition 5.2. So that is fifth grade, second semester. So with the descriptive writing that I taught last week, we used a paragraph house outline. And that is just a, a house in which they fill in the um, main level of the house with four facts about a plush toy or a doll, um, what they see, what they see, what they um, feel, what they hear or smell. And the one of the things that I really emphasized last week is that with teaching descriptive writing, well, with really teaching any type of writing, uh, one of the problems that we can get into is that we can have a lesson. So last week we had a lesson on using the senses and what you would what you would put into. So if you're if you're putting uh, so how something feels, then you're going to look for you know soft, hard, scratchy, um, coarse, thick, thin, you know, um, uh, plush, uh, you know, more like just. A, um, really, really soft um, cottony or whatever. And so we had a lesson on that for these second and third grade students. And one of the issues that I, that I brought up last week that is really going to show itself in today's lesson is that a lot of times we have a lesson on that writing. 
Okay. So like I said, we had a lesson on this, the four senses and what you, the five senses, but in this case, we only had four since it was talking about a, a um, plush toy. So, um, so you have that lesson and you are, you know, telling students now when you write, you want to include these things. Okay. The, the, these are what you're going, these are the senses that you're going to be writing to. You want to be sure to include information about this. And then we have them outline and we have them write or maybe just write. It depends on whether we are outline heavy like I am. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I have very good reasons for that. So, um, or if, but we have them go ahead and then do the assignment. The problem with that can be uh, this, and that is that we've told them what they need to do. We gave them a lesson about that descriptive writing, but then we did not, um, we did not have them give them a framework for it. Okay, so uh, that is why I showed last week in the paragraph house how each of the quads of the house have feel, feel, um, see, and then smell or hear. They're not going to be tasting their um, little plush toy, we hope. <laughs> Although we've all had kids stuck on unusual things like <laughs> little um, army man or plush toys or uh, the corners of blankets, right? But anyway, um, and so rather than just tell them, here's your lesson about this, now put it in, we give them a framework for putting it in, right? So they have to go right to that quad. They have to say, oh, I'm writing about how it feels. Here, I'm going to outline a little feel. Here, I'm going to outline a little feel. Here, I'm going to outline a little um, uh, see. Here, I'm going to outline a little um, smell or hear, depending on if the plush makes noise or whatever. And so what is often missing then is that framework. That is not just a lesson on it, but here, guys, while you prepare to write about this, I'm going to remind you of putting those things in. And I'm even going to give you a space to tell how you're going to see, feel, hear, or smell. So the same thing is true of this week's lesson. So this week's lesson is going to kind of merge that concept of having a framework for what you're, what, for what you've just taught, and also bringing in something that you've heard me speak about in earlier lessons, and that is the whole concept of teach, practice, apply. So we have here this merging of framework. We're not going to leave you hanging, kids. We are going to teach you because we always give you the skills. We always give you the expectation explanations. We always prepare you thoroughly for the type of tasks that we're asking you to do. So that whole concept of then, you know, we're gonna give you the framework merged with teach, practice, apply. So in teach, practice, apply, we are, for example, uh, I'll just give you an example from yesterday. I just taught this yesterday. And um, it was uh, prepositional phrase lessons. So my students highlighted the prepositions. They put parentheses around all of their prepositional phrases that are in um, the passage. So that was a teaching. So we used the passage, we used a preposition list, we uh, did oral work like, okay, now every time I say a preposition to you that we see in the passage, I'm going to say to you, prep what or prep whom. So I'm going to say to you through what, through the, through the air, um, via what, via the bus, to whom, to the boy. And so that is the teach part, right? We're I'm giving the lesson, I'm giving them the preposition list. They've already read, me memorized prepositions. Some, I mean, it's the third week of classes. So they, my returning students, you know, know 50 to 100, depending on their level. But, um, you know, they've already memorized prepositions. Now we're finding prepositional phrases and I am teaching that via the preposition list, via that oral description that I just gave you, via the passage in front of them as we find the prepositional phrases and so forth. Then they are practicing and they're practicing in sentences that contain prepositional phrases. And they're gonna go home and in their margin, they wrote prep what, prep whom, so they would know what to look for. And we even found the prepositions in the sentences uh, before they took that home to practice. So then they're gonna take that sent those sentences home to practice. The prepositions are all highlighted. 
in the margin, it says prep what? Prep whom? And they're going to go through and find all the prepositional phrases. So that's the teach with the passage with me, orally interacting, so on. Practice, they're going to do it in sentences that I give them and that we will be reviewing and grading. And then next week will be their application. And that will be adding prepositional phrases to sentence to their uh, essays, stories, and reports. Okay, teach, practice, apply. So when we merge this concept of a framework of what we are teaching them, so a framework so that they can put it into their writing, so they're forced to put it into their writing, so they're reminded to put it in their writing, so that they know exactly what it is they're going to put in, you know, not just, I know she said something about like what we feel and what we taste and what we smell. And I, she said something about that with our plush toy, but I can't remember. She said something about those things have to be there. And I mean, these are second and third graders, right? So we're going to give them that framework that I described last week. So today we are also going to merge that teach practice apply. You're going to see how uh, we're going to teach describers and literary devices. We're going to practice them. And then they're going to apply it as they write using a framework that I've laid out for them. All right, so here we go. Once again, we have our overview box. Remember, this is the overview for the entire lesson. So this is um, a two-week lesson. We can see at the top here, it's right off the bat, actually, in Meaningful Composition 5.2. It will also be at my Teachers Pay Teacher Store as a standalone lesson soon. <clears throat> so weeks one and two, descriptive writing, and they are going to fill in blank paragraphs about two rooms. So, Again, this is at the beginning of the book. So I say that this is a fifth grade, second semester book. Um, but since these books are standalone, like they could have used something completely different for first semester, they could have used an essay book for first semester. And now the second semester, they're using 5.2, which is a creative writing book. So because of that, uh, we approach it as though, you know, they're just now starting in a meaningful composition book. Also, if they know how to do, if they've used a first semester book and they know how to do the, uh, sentence by sentence outlining, how to do the checklist challenge, how to do the um, writing boxes, all of those things from the how to lessons, then they already, then they're, then they could even do this 5 2 at the beginning of a school year. Right. So we are, uh, that, I, the reason I bring that up is because I think that we really need to focus a lot more than we do on assumptions about what students know. So to say, you know, just to assume, you know, going into the new year, that you know, students know all of these things over here in this write on box, in this box in the write on corner, adjectives, adverbs, similes, metaphors, personification, alliteration, you know, assuming that they know all of that is a big stretch, okay? Especially for a fifth grader. So uh, you'll see how the framework sets them up for success. So again, this is the two paragraph descriptive writing and uh, they are going to use a fill in the blank method. So I, my outlining methods are super varied based on the type of writing. So uh, high schoolers have a, you know, when they're doing research, they have a formal outline with a, um, a uh, color-coded uh, research method that they use and either a paragraph by paragraph for shorter research papers or a sec section by section. You saw last week, all the way back into second grade, they have the, they have the writing boxes. They have last week's um, paragraph house. They have question and answer. They have lists that are given for them that they put in, that they create paragraphs from all types, uh, fill in the blank. This is a fill in the blank method for fifth graders. All right, so they're gonna do two paragraphs. They're gonna write seven to 10 sentences per paragraph, which sounds like a lot, but since they are doing fill in the blank, it's not at all. All right, and they're not going to have a separate opening and a separate closing. Again, too many skills, right? We are saying you're going to write a two paragraph paper. It's going to be, you know, 14 to 20 sentences, and you're going to have all this in it, right? So we're not going to come up here and also have them the first week of this book, have them do a, um, an opening and a closing. And, and I wouldn't even do that just simply because of all these skills right here, right? 
again, you've heard me talk about that, that we can have too many skills all at the same time. And that would be an example of that. <clears throat> all right, so here is the teach part. All right, and um, it talks about descriptive writing and it talks about different elements that they probably have already learned about. So uh, they've already learned about, and I'm, uh, for those of you listening and using your uh, teacher's notebook, I'm on lesson A, learning about descriptive writing. All right, so adjectives, those are words that describe nouns, examples, right? Examples, examples, exam examples, samples, 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 right? Model, model, model. Uh, uh, mentor text, mentor text, right? We want to give them every chance for success. So we always give a lot of examples. Adverbs. And then fun writing techniques. And again, this is kind of a review because um, the, they're going to practice it in a, um, in a very uh, directed way. When I talk about directed writing, uh, they are not going, directed writing approach, they're not just going to go over these things. I'm not gonna go over these things, put them on the board, talk about them, ask for examples from them verbally, all of those things, and then just say, okay, now go put all those in your paper. Right, that would not be giving them a framework that would not be directed writing. So we're going to talk about all of the methods here, the adjectives, the adverbs, and then the fun writing techniques or the literary devices, similes, metaphors, personification, alliteration. All right, and then it even says that's a lot of descriptive writing for a young student all at one time. Do not worry about memorizing all of that. In this week's writing assignment, you will write with many of those without even realizing that you are doing it. So here is their practice. We just taught it, we used the board, we used the whiteboard, we uh, did engagement from the group, you know, from the class, uh, them giving examples of it, we put it on the board, we did all the auditory uh, or oral teaching. Now we're gonna practice, we're gonna teach, practice, apply. And uh, here, we remind them of what it is, all right? So they're going to fill in the blanks to write descriptive sentences. Here, they're going to write with adjectives that tell what kind, and there's a sample. You know how I feel about that. All right, there's a sample, and then they will um, put an adjective, and there's a noun right here, boy, uh, human, chain, memories. So those, those nouns are there ready for, uh, adjectives that tell what kind, okay? Specifically with descriptive writing, um, we, and I don't talk about this a lot at the, in this book with, for, with um, fifth grade, but later on, I definitely say, um, we just had that lesson this week too. I think that was in junior high. So um, seventh, eighth grade, uh, a seventh, eighth grade class. And that is that uh, adjectives that tell what kind are the ones that we want to use that are descriptive, um, we had a double con a double adjective and triple adjective lesson that went along with that telling when to put pair, uh, commas in. But the other ones, the clarifying ones, are not the ones that are to put here. So um, I'm not bringing up the clarifying ones with these kids, but I do with the junior high kids. You don't want who's, how many, um, which one, right? You want what kind here. So with these kids, I don't go into that with fifth grade. I just say you want words that tell what kind. So then I tell them they're going to ask what kind of dog, a ferocious one, what kind of boy, what kind of human, what kind of chain, what kind of memories, okay? Then they're gonna do adverbs and it's the same setup. All of the descriptive right words and the descriptive terms as well as the uh, literary devices are all laid out in the same way for this practice section. So the dog menacingly pulled at his chain and um, we have, verbs right here. Obviously, you know, adverbs can describe verbs, um, adjectives or other adverbs, but at this level, I want their, I want their blank to be right before an action verb, right? I don't want them to have to try to put in an adverb that goes backwards uh, to uh, the verb that's earlier or something like that. That's an, a more advanced skill. <clears throat> so um, the dog menacingly pulled at his chain and then they have all those verbs to describe how. How did they do it? Okay, how did they fight? Now, uh, adverbs can do a lot of diff different things, right? But when we're putting it with the verb, um, we're not talking about when or where um, or to what extent. Uh, that's usually reserved for, 
like when it's describing another adverb or it's describing an adjective. Um, but we want the one that is describing these verbs and we want it to tell how. And really this is a, um, <clears throat> a no fail setup, right? Because I'm giving them the hat, telling them to use the ones that write that say how, but they really can't do much more here, anything different than that, right? Um, so uh, a dog does not, I guess they could say always forget, um, but here they're going to tell how. So I'm, I'm setting them up so that they are using adverbs to describe verbs, okay? Not to describe other adverbs or adjectives. All right, and here then are the similes. And again, this is comparisons using the word like or as. I have some uh, new uh, uh, writing posters coming out. And one of them is the simile that has as and like coming off of the word simile, kind of a little acrostic. Uh, that is really easy to remember that a simile uses the word like or as. So you can check my Teachers Pay Teacher store for upcoming posters. And uh, that will be a, um, I don't know if that's going to be a tricky trick poster or a writing poster, um, but you can look under posters at uh, Language Arts Lady Teachers Pay Teacher store. All right, so this is going to be um, fill in the blank again. And it has the words, they, all the sentences have the words like, as, like, like, as, okay? And not, not used as verbs. Like we're not saying, I like this, right? Uh, <clears throat> older students can get tripped up on that and they think that if they put a like in, then it's a simile. And then they realize that they just said, you know, uh, the girl liked um, the new dress and they have no simile there because they use like the verb, right? So again, this is setting them up for success. This is still the practice part. So we have the likes and as in there for them and they're going to make a comparison, okay? All right, then metaphors. These are ones that do not use uh, like or as. Um, so, uh, person, uh, the sample there, the dog is a monster when provoked. Of course, we have already talked about it. We went through what metaphors are on the previous page. And um, we put some examples on the board. We talked about how it's usually something that's so out there, like a monster when provoked, that you wouldn't think the dog really is a monster. So it's something that gives a, uh, an ex um, almost an exaggerated comparison, an exaggerated picture but you don't need like or as because you, it's so exaggerated that you know it's not literal. So anyway, we did all that on the board when we went over the similes and metaphors verbally. All right, then personification, uh, phrases that give objects human characteristics. And there's a sample for them. The leaves of the trees clap their hands. So, um, you know, they can say down there, the wind was whistling a scary tune. Uh, the dog, like a human, uh, uh, um, uh, we want to make the dog be human. So the dog, like a human, uh, sat up at his food bowl um, and spooned in his food, even though he really didn't use a spoon, right? The snake did what and the bird did what? Okay, write with alliteration. And these are phrases that begin with the same sound. And we just had a lesson on that. I always emphasize to them that maybe not at this level, but definitely in junior high and high school, that uh, they begin with the same sound, not the same letter, right? Because you could have um, the generous um, gorilla handed bananas to the onlookers, but generous and gorilla do not begin with the same sound, they simply begin with the same letter. So when I teach alliteration to junior high and high school, I make sure I point out uh, that it is the sound they are after, okay? So two, uh, the same sound, two or three, um, usually once you get into four or five or six, I have a, a free um, spelling download uh, it's, uh, at my Teachers Pay Teacher store, and it is free. It is, I think it's uh, under spelling practice, but it's called the 6S spelling secret sheet. Yeah, that's a little bit too much alliteration. 
<laughs> six S spelling. All right, so um, they're going to put their um, alliterations right there in the blanks, and I'm going to help them with the punctuation, right? Because uh, cranky, clumsy camel, uh, they are have probably not learned that when you have two what kind of adjectives, descriptive, the ones that tell what kind. And uh, you could trade places with them, the clumsy cranky camel that you need commas, a comma between those two adjectives, but not the comma after the adjective and before the noun it's describing. So they probably don't know all that yet, right? So I tell them, don't worry, this is practice. I'm gonna come in and um, punctuate it for you, for them. Okay, so now we're getting ready to write ourselves. And we are going to write a two paragraph room description and we have our student sample, okay? So one of my favorite rooms is the living room because it is big and comfy. This room has pretty colors, including brown and blue. This blue, brown and bright room brings its owner joy. It is like a breath of fresh air to those who come into it. The sun in this room seems to welcome me. My favorite time to go to this room is in the evening. When I go into the living room, I like to dive onto the couch. Yes, this room is definitely the best. Another favorite room of mine is my bedroom because it is warm and cozy. This room has pretty colors, including green and blue. This welcoming, wonderful, and warm room brings its owner joy. It is like a haven to those who come into it. The bed in this room seems to call to me. My favorite time to go to this room is the night. When I go into the bedroom, I like to look at the fish. Yes, this room is definitely phenomenal. All right, so they are going to do the assignments and we can see the assignments here, read this and then do this. They're in bold font with a little uh, diamond in front of it. Fill in the blanks provided for two separate rooms. So I'm gonna choose two rooms. And here we have fill in the blank um, outlining, okay? So we are having, this is their framework that I talked about last week. This is their framework. We're not just saying, okay, now write two paragraphs about two rooms and don't forget all the things we said on the board about alliteration and similes and metaphors and personification. Oh, and don't forget adjectives and, and adverbs. You wanna be sure to put those in, right? Instead, we are giving them the framework to make them succeed at putting them in, uh, in these lower levels. So here they're going, it's gonna be a fill in the blank. Adjectives in the second and third line. One of my favorite rooms is blank. So they're gonna fill that in because it is, and they're gonna put two adjectives there, blank and blank. Um, they're actually predicate adjectives, but we're not worried about that with this level, right? We're not gonna say, don't forget, your adjective is gonna go back to the it and da, 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 da. All right, <clears throat> so, uh, Again, it lends itself to putting in the correct answer, right? They're not going to say because it is um, gorgeously and um, colorfully, right? Because they know how to speak, right? They know more than they think they know. And sometimes they even know more than we think they know. All right, so adjectives here, collar names. All right, so this is a different uh, type of adjective, sometimes descriptive, sometimes not. Um, but they're going to tell the colors that are in the room. This room has pretty colors, including blank and blank. Number three, fill in with three words that begin with the same letter using alliteration. This blank, and the comma is already there for them, comma, blank, comma, and blank room brings its owner joy. All right, and it tells them right there, they want it to begin with the same letter. And then there's an example, always examples. We love the kids. All right, simile, it is like blank, a blank to those who come into it. Example, drink of cool water. All right, then they're gonna keep on going with the same paragraph, personification. The blank in this room seems to blank, okay? The windows seem to smile. My details, details, and then an adjective again. My favorite time to go to this room is on the blank. When I go into the blank, that's the room or, or the closet or um, the bed or whatever, I like to admire the organization. When I get go into the bed, I like to um, turn on my nightlight and read. All right. Adjective. Yes, this room is definitely blank. 
again, set the, we're setting them up so that they're not going to say this room is definitely um, fabulously. <laughs> All right. Then they're going to do the same thing to the second room. Two separate paragraphs, keeping uh, in line with something that they've learned since second grade from me, and that is that a paragraph is a unit of thought. When you switch rooms, you switch paragraphs. Then they're going to write their two descriptive uh, paragraphs. Read the first sentence of the first room's description list created in lesson B. That will become your opening sentence. Read through the remainder of the sentence um, and number them in the order you want them so they can change the order of it, uh, excluding the last, last sentence, which could be their closing. Indent and begin writing. And, uh, you know, at first they said one of my favorite rooms. We're going to make sure that they say another favorite room for the second one, that transitional phrase there. They don't even have to know they're doing it. We're just telling them to do it. <laughs> All right. So that takes care of two descriptive paragraphs, giving them the teach, practice, apply method, giving them the framework for writing this by giving them a fill in the blank type of outline so that they <clears throat> have no choice but to use the describers as well as the um, literary devices. So there you go. And you can see how a fifth grader can come up with outstanding paragraphs that are very, very descriptive, that have all of, uh, that have many uh, um, describers and have many literary devices that make the description come alive and make the description more interesting to the reader. So without further ado, let me take you to the back matter. I wanna remind you that you can get more freebies. You can get all of the teacher's notebooks. We are at 28 of them so far. You can get all of those at languageartsladyblog.com forward slash teacher's notebook. You can get today's um, or any that you may have missed uh, in one at a time at languageartsladyblog.com forward slash how I teach. Every episode is there with a thumbnail and it has the outline, it has the description, it has the teacher's notebook, it has the um, video and uh, the podcast link too. So you can get that all at forward slash how I teach. <clears throat> okay, here are a couple free products. Don't forget uh, with the five free books, one book at each level, you get the free lesson with me teaching it to your students on video. So this is Mowgli level two and Peter Pan level three. These would be uh, ones that would have descriptive writing, not this exact same assignment, but descriptive writing at this level that we're talking about, this fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, you know, right in there. All right, and here are downloadable products related to this. Again, more descriptive writing, super fun, cute, descriptive projects like this one. This is just such a favorite of mine. Beauty and the Beast 3, an original expository essay, three castle objects that you would want as friends. How cute is that? I'm just telling you, these are fun, cute, interesting uh, projects that keep kids' attention, but that also give them all the skills that they need to do these projects. There. And then here are the meaningful composition books that contain uh, the creative writing, descriptive writings um, for uh, what I would say um, really upper third grade all the way through um, seventh. So those uh, three, five, and seven second semester books are all creative. And then Jumpstart has a lot of uh, creative stuff in it as well. Jumpstart one. All right, we can still create a class for you um, or for your co-op online or in person. Uh, my husband, he has, his, his schedule is really filling up. He has some daytime um, higher teacher spots left. So this is where somebody says, I don't want to teach algebra two. I want to find somebody to do it for 45 minutes a week, grade my students stuff, take in his work, assign his work. Um, all of these subjects here, he can literally teach anything. He was out the other night until 11 o'clock with the driver's training kid. <laughs> I mean, and then, uh, yeah, he's, he's a whiz. He's a master. Okay, so that's hire a teacher. Also private tutoring. 
the evening slots are um, really filling up. He has some weekend slots and he also has daytime. So if you need private tutoring online or in person um, for any remediation or the more the higher a teacher approach, he definitely has some daytime slots that he could probably fit you in. All right, thank you so much for joining me on this How I Teach. I will see you next week for episode number 29. I haven't decided what it's going to be yet, uh, but since we were up into the uh, high school and upper level, and now we've done second and third last week, and then kind of fourth, fifth, sixth this week, uh, we may hang out here a little bit for the, for the littles. We'll see. I do love the littles. All righty. Thank you very much for joining me. See you next week.